。起来，不愿做奴隶的人们。You know, China's national anthem actually tells us what's happening in the world right now. Believe it or not. Stand up, those who refuse to be slaves. It's kind of ironic that the world doesn't want to be China's slave at the moment. The thing is, it was our governments and our institutions and companies that were complicit in getting China to where it is today. Don't get me wrong, development is good. I wanted to see a developed China. It's only a good thing for people to have more access to a better life. I was there during China's golden age, 2008 to 2018. Things really looked like they were getting better and opening up. Hell, I remember we even cheered when Xi Jinping came into office because it looked like he was going to continue on that path of liberalization. How wrong we were! Today's video is brought to you by NordVPN. NordVPN is the VPN that I choose to use because what a VPN does is it keeps your data safe and secure and anonymous. It basically puts it through a tunnel so nobody can see your credit card information or what you're doing online. NordVPN is the easiest one to use. You can hop around all different servers around the world, and not only that, it actually opens up a whole different world of content to you. You can hop around to different countries' servers and access what they see online. It's holiday season right now. You want to watch Christmas movies? A lot of these Streaming services have blocked them, or moved them, or made them behind paywalls. But if you hop around to different servers, you can access that country's streaming service, so you're not behind a paywall anymore. Maybe there's a Christmas movie you want to watch here in the U.S., but the U.K. only has it available for streaming for free. Well, just hop over to the U.K. server, and you'll be able to watch it. Don't forget to go to nordvpn.com/lawai. Not only are you going to get a massive, huge discount off a two-year plan, you're actually going to get an additional month for free. It's risk-free to try. Go to nordvpn.com/lawai. China closed down. China ended up readopting Maoist rhetoric. You know that whole cult of personality. That's a real thing now. It seriously feels like a richer version of North Korea. I saw the hammer and sickle reemerge, and that floating visage of the chairman on billboards instead of Coca-Cola or real estate projects. China became feared. Because it started projecting itself, and guess what? A strong nation with a strong identity is totally fine. But this was a strong nation with an identity crafted around xenophobia, insecurity, nationalism. Be Jiang Zai, fourteen million Chinese people, in the face of a steel plate in front of the Tiananmen. And racial superiority, and you could feel it on the streets too. When Xi Jinping went into full force, people changed. This was Xi's China now. China adopted this technique called wolf warrior diplomacy. No joke. They named a style of diplomacy. Which really just boils down to acting like a douchebag bully. They named it after a nationalist propaganda movie. You see, the way that diplomacy worked in the past for China was, we're gonna play the nice guy, we're gonna play the quiet guy, we're gonna sit in the background and accept investment, while you guys go and do your thing, and the world kind of carries on and moves on like it should. The problem is that Xi Jinping, he sought to stir up. That status quo. You know the old "you do you, China." We'll just invest. To now, we are the strongest nation in the world, and we will increase our human rights abuses, institute more restrictions on personal freedom, take what is ours in the South China Sea and around the world, and project our evil to the rest of the world under the guise of economic and infrastructure projects. And if you complain. We're gonna act like a 12-year-old bully on Twitter at you. Seriously, I watched China go from a nation that was fairly well respected and up and coming to an absolute immature laughing stock. And I'll be honest, I kind of hate it. I love China. It was such an awesome place to live, full of awesome people. I made the best memories of my entire life there. Wouldn't have lived there for 10 years if that wasn't the case. The Chinese people don't really deserve to be represented by this racist-ass, immature bully of an authoritarian government that gets free reign over the internet 
while they block all the sites that we like to use, like YouTube and Twitter and stuff, for their own citizens. It's a bad look. They deserve better. And with all this posturing and bullying and all this these threats and nasty attitudes abroad, you know, Xi Jinping just flipping this whole nice guy diplomacy on its head, would you be surprised if I told you that it completely backfired? I'm sure you wouldn't. China's approval abroad has never been worse. It's not even just like in the West. It's even amongst their friends. And I say friends in air quotes. Let's be honest. China's style of governance, I mean, when you strip away the propaganda, it isn't too palatable. Do you like extreme censorship? How about getting disappeared for your religious beliefs? Hope you don't like to criticize any level of the government, because that's not allowed. Enjoy being monitored everywhere you go, and have every action that you do and thing that you say rated and tracked. You know what? It's all good, because you can go willy fast on that new choo-choo train. Despite all this, the world was scared of China. The military parades were something out of the Soviet Union. The xenophobic and nationalist rhetoric, it's pretty Hitler-esque. And the genocide camps in Western China for minorities that the government doesn't like? I mean, let's be honest here. I don't think anybody likes genocide. Well, except for the Chinese government. Disappearing dissidents that speak out against the government, Nobel Peace Prize winners being demonized and imprisoned, rolling through Hong Kong and basically deleting a free country and replacing it with a pro-Beijing authoritarian government in the matter of a year, military threats of destroying Taiwan in an invasion. This shit is kind of scary. Until it's not. You see, you can act tough and you can scare people abroad, but... Eventually, people stop seeing you as this benevolent force that hides behind bullshit propaganda and just sees you as a fat, spoiled piece of shit. And a bully at that. Who said it? Was it Mike Tyson? He said, like, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. That's kind of what the Chinese government's dealing with at the moment. All of their propaganda is coming unraveled. Look at this New York Times piece that just came out that talks about how even Westerners are paid by the Chinese government to promote authoritarian atrocities in an authoritarian style of government and to promote the Chinese leadership, all while demonizing freedom and individualism in the rest of the world. It's coming undone. Look at India. India used to be pretty quiet about the border conflict they had with China. That area has always been in conflict. Troops have always clashed there. It's always been a point of contention between China and India, longtime rivals. But they're not quiet about it anymore. In fact, India is becoming very vocal about its distaste for the Chinese leadership. Look at all the countries doing diplomatic boycotts of the Beijing 2022 Winter Olympics. Because the retaliation from China can oftentimes be economic disaster. Look at Lithuania. They just pulled out their diplomats out of China and set up a de facto Taiwan office in their own country in spite of what the EU says, and in spite of what Beijing threatens them with. Look at Hollywood. I'll be honest with you, I thought Hollywood was lost to the Chinese government. The self-censorship just to get into the Chinese markets. Removing Tom Cruise's Taiwan flag off of his jacket to make sure that your movie could be aired within the borders of China. Not to mention all of the subject changes and lines being removed and, and the whole topics and subject matter of movies being altered just so that Beijing censors were happy. But that's changed. I'm not gonna say it's gone full 180, but you're seeing a hell of a lot less censorship than you were a little while ago. Look at the Milk Tea Alliance. You get these countries coming together like Taiwan and Thailand and Hong Kongers coming together, these people probably would have fought with each other over online games before, are now coming together in an alliance, in pro-democracy alliance against Beijing, to fight censorship and to stand up against the absolute bullshit bullying of the Chinese government. Look at the Hong Kong protesters. You had millions, and I'm not joking, millions of people go out onto the streets to protest and fight for their democracy and their rights. Although they lost in the end, it was a clear victory for democracy's image across the world. And it was clear proof that the majority of Hong Kongers did not want 
China telling them what to do. Even in places where China's kind of bought and paid for, like in Africa where they completely rape and pillage the land of its minerals and resources and fish, they might have these governments bought and paid for, but they don't have the people bought and paid for. The protests happen all the time and people in Africa are really pissed off. Pakistan's probably one of China's biggest allies. And look what they're doing now. Look at the Philippines. Look at all the countries in the South China Sea. Look at, look at Vietnam. Hell, look at Taiwan. It was in Taiwan's best interest to keep its mouth shut and just accept the fact that Beijing claimed Taiwan as a part of China and to go about their merry business. But no, Taiwanese people stood up and they elected a pro-independence party and leader, Tsai Ing-wen. Something that is unprecedented. And guess what? China still hasn't done anything about it. That was supposed to be the last straw. You see, all the other past leadership, other than Chairman Mao, Ye Deng Xiaoping, Jiang Zemin, Hu Jintao, they're pretty quiet. You'd have things like Tibet, people talking about Tibet independence and stuff like that, which is a major issue. They're fairly low key on an international stage. Most people, including China, kept their mouth shut. In fact, China was more powerful in many ways under their past leadership because no one really pushed them on any real issues. Xi Jinping started acting like a tough guy and threatening the world, and while it worked for a while, people are sick of it now. Bullies are boring. They are not fun. China doesn't know how to laugh at itself. It only knows how to say it's gonna strike back and retaliate with every single tiny little criticism that it gets, and it's really embarrassing. And as scary as its power projections are, Long term, it's not gonna win any hearts and minds. Hong Kong was a great example of how powerful it can be left when it's unchecked though. Hong Kongers left the world a very scary warning of what's to come when Beijing is allowed to do what it wants. And that's why you, the person listening or watching this video, is so important. Citizens of the world, I'm speaking to you. We said never again with Hitler and Pol Pot and all these dictators. And I feel like it's human nature to stick up for the downtrodden. That's just, that's just how we work. But if we get lazy and we let those in power dictate what we want instead of doing it ourselves, we're gonna have to realize quickly that things don't work out the way that we want them to be. Those in power, including your own government, don't always have your best interests in mind until we let them know and that's why you need to do something about it and say something about it. You can influence your government. China can influence whatever government they want. You can buy off any despotic dictatorship in the world and to get them to treat their people like shit and to walk all over them so that China can do whatever they want in the country. And both pockets are aligned. But you can't keep people quiet. These governments, although they're bought and paid for by China, in the end, the people are not gonna shut up about it. And that's actually what limits China's influence abroad. That's why it's important for people to rise up. Although we're seeing people less and less scared of China and more and more willing to stand up, you see remnants. We need to weed them out. I mean, China's trying to do everything it can to influence opinions abroad, including within the borders of the US, even within educational institutions. Look at this letter that just came out of Purdue University. Dear Purdue students, staff, and faculty, Purdue learned from a national news account last week that one of our students, after speaking out on behalf of freedom and others martyred for advocating it, was harassed and threatened by other students from his own country. Worse still, his family back home, in this case, China, was visited and threatened by agents of that nation's secret police. They go on to talk about how that's unacceptable and how they won't allow that, but you have to understand, people that speak out against China, including Chinese people, within the borders of even the USA, are harassed and then followed and stifled even back home in their own countries until they're intimidated to shut up. Look at Drew Pavlou. He's running for office in Australia. They're not letting him put up his campaign posters on billboards. They're not even allowing a Chinese person, who is a dissident artist, to post his artwork on the billboards because they are scared of the Chinese government.
We're, we're saying we can post nothing on a billboard in Brisbane that's critical of the Chinese Communist Party. This is an instance where you need to do something about it. Absolutely, positively, when you find instances like this, where the Chinese government has weaseled and wormed its way like a cancer or an infestation into politics or business or influence in the educational systems, you need to weed it out. You need to join together with the Chinese people, the Chinese dissidents, the Chinese people that left their country in hopes of freedom or democracy to participate in their government, to help them extend their voice to not be squashed by the Communist Party of China. Don't just rely on your government. Fight censorship. And don't allow the Chinese government to bully its way into your and our future, no matter where you are.